So what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about um, raising a puppy. We're going to start the series kind of backwards a little bit. Um, so one thing that I want to take into account starting this is the fact that um, I'm, my focus is raising puppies for potentially sport and protection work. So what I am doing is I'm choosing puppies that specifically are showing traits that I am looking for in a, that will serve me well in training and developing a very strong adult. And we can do, we can talk about uh, different traits and things in different puppies. And again, it doesn't mean a, a puppy is going to succeed or fail in certain areas. It just means I want to look for strengths and weaknesses in certain puppies. So we're kind of working backwards a little bit, and I'm hoping to kind of have a newer puppy added on at some point to be able to kind of, okay, what would be realistic? So Winston, the puppy that I'm going to be using, um, at least I don't know if he's going to be staying with us for a year. I don't know if he's going to be leaving for a new home. It's just going to depend on what's happening. Um, but I will say that, you know, Winston is a puppy that I've had since he was two days old with his litter that I raised. So I'm pretty familiar with his nuances, but it, I think it'd be fair because most people are not going to have that experience. Most people are going to go to a breeder or to a rescue and select a puppy that way. Um, so I think it would be who to kind of show more of a newer nuance to that versus, well, this is, I, I kind of have a step ahead of the game because I've had this puppy for an X amount of time. So I kind of understand his weaknesses and his quirks and managing them. And it's going to be a little bit of a different picture because, again, I'm, I'm selecting strong personalities to be able to shape into protection sport stuff. So these puppies are going to be coming off of the bat kind of already fiery. And that's going to be a little bit different than your typical pet dog. It should be. So, but what I want to reiterate is the first thing is I've raised a lot of puppies. Um, most of my adult dogs that I have now, I have raised since they were puppies. Um, and I have raised several other puppies that have gone on to be successful in pet homes and as therapy dogs and as service dogs even. So a lot of this stuff is transferable, what I'm going to show you. And unfortunately, it's not going to be in order. Um, some of this is going to be kind of like hit or miss because uh, I'm documenting starting this one. Again, I've had him since he was two days old. Um, with his litter and his mom um, and then another one would be coming from a breeder and that would be more realistic So like how would I start about Teaching a dog how to ride in a car that kind of stuff So some of this is going to be kind of jambled together and again, this isn't something that's going to be right or wrong um, These are all things that I have found that work for me, but they may not work for you And if you have a trainer They might think that I'm crazy But these are all things that I have taught my dogs and puppies over the years that have been relatively successful so what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and start and grab Winston and kind of get started. And so I'm going to kind of go through what I would be teaching a puppy. Um, one of the first things I start teaching any of my puppies. Okay, so one of the first things that I start teaching my puppies is how to lure um, and, under and following a food lure. Um, so he is a Malinois German Shepherd. He's a very high drive puppy, which means um, he is basically a fiery little toddler on crack is basically, which is kind of what we're looking for when we're selecting a sporting protection dog um, um, prospect, right? So he's very fiery. He's, he's fiery and spicy, which is with us kind of what we want. So, um, so he's very toy motivated. You know, he likes to chase things. Um, he likes to bite things, but he's also very food motivated. Now, your puppy um, is probably not going to be quite as spicy, but all puppies to a certain extent have food motivation. And it's really going to be up to you as the owner. Um, and if, if you're working with a trainer, that's a really great question for them. Kind of how you want to address utilizing food in your training. So Winston um, has not had any food withheld. Everything in here in my treat pouch is high value. He has, as you can tell, he has a very huge prey drive. He's trying to, or excuse me, food drive. He's trying to get into my treat pouch. 
right? So, but you might have a puppy that's not quite as enthusiastic, that's kind of more take it and leave it. Um, and so there's a million and one ways to address the food problem. So you can utilize, there's trainers out there that utilize food for training. I do that mostly with adults. I don't really do that with puppies um, as much. Um, but there are people out there that do that utilize their kibble just for training and they utilize and they train for like every single meal. Again, that's something I find and I do with adults myself. I don't really do that with puppies um, because I think puppies have such a short attention span and they need extra calories. But that's just my opinion. Um, but that doesn't mean their way is wrong. That's what works for them. That's just not something that I would do. Um, but I might, you know, given, given the right puppy, I might have to try it. What I tend to do, depending on the puppy, is um, I'll either take their kibble, if I'm utilizing kibble in their training, and I will um, mix it in. I use mozzarella cheese, like cheese sticks, and I'll cut cheese it. Or I use um, hot dogs or something like that, something that I can cut and that's easy for them to swallow and that is very enticing that they want and um then it's something that i can that's easier for me to handle and i find that puppy kibble is a little bit harder to to handle so that might be something to consider um because what we're going to do with him is we're going to he understands the concept already so he's a little bit sharp he's going to be sharper at this don't be really surprised if you're trying this at home with your puppy and it looks a lot slower. Um, and again, some of it's a breed thing, but most of it's an exposure thing because again, I've been sort of kind of prepping him for this since he was three weeks old, right? So, um, but so you'll even, you'll probably see that even with the Malinois puppy, um, you'll kind of see that it can be slower. So a lot of it is genetics, but a lot of it's also exposure as well. Um, so, and don't be surprised if your pet puppy that you've gotten is really slow to respond to some of this stuff. Um, you know, it's, they're not, not learning it if they're not as fast, right? If you're still doing the work and they're slow, that's okay. That's actually more normal. Like I said, he's kind of like a, a toddler on crack. Um, so, you know, don't expect your puppy to be this level, right? And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. You're probably getting much better sleep and you're not getting attacked as much. So you're probably happier than me. So what we're going to start off doing is I try to get everything really small and bite-sized. Um, and I take a handful of it. And obviously we really don't have to entice them. So the first thing we have to realize is um, movement is motivation. So I might want him to follow my hand over here and reward him at some point. So he's like, oh, I get the thing. This is great. So I'm do some figure eights here. And so what you might end up doing with your puppy is you might end up having a whole bunch in your hand and rewarding intermittently. So the idea is I chase the thing, I get the food. So you're introducing your puppy to learning, which that's going to serve you well in quite a few aspects of the puppy's life and introducing them to new things, um, which we'll talk about some of that later. Um, here you go. So I might make this more complicated and only reward them at a certain spot, but don't be too surprised if you do this with your puppy and it takes them a minute or two. Um, like I said, the fact that he's running around, this is something that he's been doing pre or prepping for pretty much since he's been young. So you see how I kind of lost him there. And I, actually what I had to do is I had to take my hand and kind of bring it back to his nose and like kind of, in, to kind of build a little bit of frustration for him to, um, be interested in it again. So if you're losing your dog, you know, always go back a couple steps. There you go. I want him to be interested in the movement. So if I lose him, you know, I might have to change my tactic a little bit. But ultimately, I want him to follow my hand. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to, I'm going to go back to two hands. So I want him to kind of think. So see, I lost him there. Yes. I lost him a little bit there. So you start off with one hand with maybe a lot of kibble and then you might, or treats, whatever, reward. Cookies, we'll say cookie. Um, sorry, Denise Spence, they were stealing cookies from me. So, you know, maybe I might have a bunch in one hand. So you see how he's like, oh, but, but the jackpot's here. So how do I do this? So I might take my hand and 
reward him there. Like there's a success in this, not so much the other thing. So then I switch hands. So what a lot of people tend to do when they're introducing luring, scotch enough, is they tend to lure with one hand. I want my puppies to, well, the one thing that I have learned is I want my puppies to learn that, yeah, I can lure with both hands. The reward's not necessarily going to come from one or the other. So I want to do what I, I'm going to use a variable reward program using my hands. Um, it, it's unpredictable. Does the reward come from one hand? Does it come from the other? What's going to happen? I don't know. The puppy doesn't know. But the idea is we want to build that try. So I, I lost him there. He came back. I gave him a reward then. So here I'm going to whoop, whoop my hand around. And he comes for this one. And then he gets a reward for that. Okay. So, good boy. Yeah, I see. I see. So the next thing we're going to do, which is going to be a little bit harder, is I'm actually going to stand up if I can. And you're seeing this in real time. So you get to see me struggle with my, my joints and everything, which is so exciting. All right, so what I might do here, and this is kind of hard for some puppies. He's really used to going in between legs and that spatial pressure thing. Um, a lot of puppies aren't, so you're going to have to really dial this back a little bit. So it might be that you're feeding the puppy constantly around you. Um, you might get one leg one session. So I kind of lost him there. You see that? So I'm going to kind of bring him back over, and I'm actually going to reward him while he's here. And then bring him here. Good job. Good boy. Yay. Yay. He's a wonder. He's a real quinky child. Yeah, he's a quinky child. All right. <laughs> okay. So here we go. I'm going to actually take this and lure him over here. So right now I'm keeping everything towards the front of my fingers. And we'll talk about pocket hand and stuff at a more appropriate time. But right now I just have everything kind of in the cliff of my hand, I guess you would say. So I'm introducing the heel work. Good boy. And right now we're just it's just position work. That's all this is. So all I'm doing, I want him to be comfortable with being close. And you'll be very surprised. How many dogs and the puppies especially are not very comfortable with that closeness. So you want to give them a lot of grace and some time to kind of figure out what exactly you want. And again, and I can't reiterate this enough, he's had kind of a, um, he's had a little bit of upper hand because I've been the one raising him. Okay. So I want him to also realize that sometimes the hand changes. Sometimes it means go here. And sometimes the hand moves. All right, sometimes the hand backs up. So sometimes these things change. Good boy. You know what I mean? There you go. All right, so one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, introducing, um, luring the hand um, using a sit and a down. Because he is so fast and he's getting everything really quickly, I'm going to start introducing a down and a sit. Normally, if I start introducing a sit into the program, that's generally what I do. I wouldn't do that with a puppy that's struggling. I actually do a down a little bit later, but because he's being so quick about it and he's very much comfortable with it, I feel comfortable enough to... Yes. I feel comfortable enough to add this to our routine. So I'm going to take, this is, I'm taking my hand, I'm going to kind of lure him, and then do that. So hand goes up, he goes up, I reward. So, ooh, there's a cookie down there, and I dropped it, big deal. So I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to push it over his nose, I'm going to push it down. So I want him to follow that to the ground. Yes, so he's learned to follow that, right? So I'm going to take this, I'm going to actually push up. Take that, push down. And then over a period of time, what I'm going to be able to do is I should be able to combine those, right? And again, if your puppy isn't doing this at home, that's not a big deal. This is probably the sharpest puppy I've ever raised. Um, most of my puppies have been kind of, even though my Malinois have been kind of slow. So um, 
again, don't feel bad. A lot of this is an exposure thing. Um, scotch. So he kind of stood up there. So I'm going to kind of push back. So what that's telling me is I need to go back to direct rewards, not really so much variable right now, because it might be too hard for him right now. Right? So if your puppy's messing up, well, if your dog's messing up, but if your puppy's messing up, you know, have grace and kind of go back. Because if they're messing up, that means that they're actually genuinely struggling. It's not that they don't want to do the thing. It's that they actually don't know exactly what you're asking. So you have to have a little bit of grace in helping them out. So him flailing is a little bit of frustration. There you go. You see, you got a treat. So he's a little confused. He's like, well, what do I do with this? So I'm going to push him back. And then I'm going to lure him back down. He's like, oh, I know this game. Yes. And I'm going to end it right there for him. Right? As much as I want to keep pushing it, remember with your puppies, you want to keep everything really super short, really super sweet. Um, as far as this goes, when we're talking about environmental exposure and things, I don't mind them getting tired and falling asleep. But I don't want, for something like this, I don't want him to lose his interest or get frustrated enough where he leaves. Because I don't have him contained. He can go wherever he'd like to go. Um, so I want him to, from the beginning, I want my partner to actively choose to work with me. I don't want to have to chase them and get them back in. And of course, when we get to that point, because puppies grow up, um, right? So they start, they lose interest. Other things are out there. The, there's a whole wide world of really cool stuff out there that's way cooler than you. We'll discuss about how to kind of like use your energy and excitement and kind of lure them back in. Um, and uh, having them opt to work with you versus making them work with you. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of, um, so next time what we're going to be working on is we're going to work on luring him on to things like a placemat. And we're also going to start luring him, um, into a crate and start working on crate training. Um, and, and what that's going to look like for a puppy, um, and how I teach my puppies to start going into a crate. And, um, but it starts a lot with kind of crate games more so than shoving him into the crate, letting him scream it out and um and then letting him out i mean you can do it that way that's just not my preference right you little violent thing you violent offender you're violent i love you too poisy you poisy you poisy guy okay don't bite my face don't do it don't bite my face 